How you doing, guys? This is our weekly podcast where we make fools of ourselves for your for your benefit. Ryan took it upon himself without permission from yours truly to write this song. It's going to serve as our momentary space filler of a interest. Ryan and Bra, ready to rock on the podcast and counter podcast. That wasn't the one we agreed on. Oh, the one sorry. we agreed on was so great. What the world needs now is Brock and Ryan sharing the thoughts. <laughs> Two white guys in leather chairs. Yeah. Solving all the world's problems. I'm 40 years old, by the way. This is not how you're supposed to dress. Technically, he's 41. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm technically 41, and this is not how you're supposed to dress. So says my wife. Just give it up, man. She's very wise. Give it up. We all know how old you are. Yeah. I think you and I are an example of two incorrects. You know what I mean? You think I'm the, am I the example of You're, having given up on? Yeah. I, I didn't think we were podcasting today, so I just slapped on the. Let's just be honest with each other. <laughs> Normally I come to work in a, what are, what are the kids wearing? A bolo tie? No. Um, <laughs> no, Ryan wakes up and thinks, what's the least amount of effort? <laughs> I feel like there's a bar of minimally, minimally, minimally acceptable clothing in a situation, and I hang just below that bar. Yeah, you hope that other people are going to bring you in, into the curve wave. <laughs> there's like a, I'm not in sweatpants, you know? Yes. I'm not, there aren't, goes on, there aren't <laughs> visible stains on what I'm wearing. He, Ryan wakes up and goes, walmarttragedies.com, and as long as it doesn't look like that, <laughs> yeah, he heads yeah, out yeah. the door. What is the minimum? Li- I everything. My clothes, my haircuts. You know, I no. Get, the haircuts are moving in the right direction. Well, That's my, a super this fly is a, haircut. My sister cut this for me. This is the first haircut I haven't given myself in seven years. And I gotta tell you, man, the wedding. Yeah, that, there's a little fade going on. That gets the thumbs up from me. But minimally acceptable is just like. Whatever, you know, getting by in life, whatever the one attachment on the clippers are, and that's what you do. And that's what the Ryan haircut was for. Like, I wonder what you were like my, in your prime. All now. of my 20s. In prime meaning? I have not hit my prime yet, uh, so I'll <laughs> let you know. <laughs> that's a great answer. We'll find out. It, I'm, I'm uh, thinking 33. Ryan just roaming free and thinking about what he's going to do to present himself well to both Young, young, virtuous ladies and society at large. Now, I would have liked to have been around for that. Unfortunately, I wasn't. I inherited. <laughs> if, there, if that time existed, it's not right now. You inherited post-caring, Ryan. Right. I know. I would have loved to have seen that. Because there's rumors out there of a very, not a Jake, not like too much. You were like the leader of the pack. Like there was, there's rumors on the street. The pack being nerdy people. I was the. I was the, the cream al- that ro- the rose to the top. The comic book store. I was the cream that rose to the top of people with the monthly Marvel subscription uh, playing Settlers of Catan on Saturday nights in college. Yeah. yeah. It's all relative, man. Big fish, very, very small pond. You find I your lane. You. you find, listen, everyone out there, life in high school, college, even after, one big popularity contest, don't strive mm. to be the best overall. Just find, find a lane in which you can dominate. Oh, that's good stuff. Rainbow. Find cool little uh, music the more you know and for me king of the nerds that is going to be the best thing you hear all podcasts so from here on out it's not going to be that great all right but we're going to move in my the man Ryan delivered a very thoughtful um and remember last week i i thought it was a very good analogy evil knievel was going to make the jump we all were going to like kind of cringe in our seats and hope he makes it he made it nicely I, done i contemplated just stopping three quarters of the way through because there was a moment where it's like man be sick if it just ended right here. Yeah. Yeah, where you that's where you you bloodied the lip and now you're supposed to be doing like all the Because healing. you think you're making the turn. You think like humans are utterly sinful mm-hmm. and it's like what is God's response to sin? And then it was like punishment. I'm out. Sinkholes and then mic. like just press us down a little further and then if I had just Sink ended holes. if I had just been done there that would have been <laughs> let's take communion and <laughs> I thought you did a great job, man. And I would ask the larger audience to ignore the fact that this yes. very feminine mug sort of sort of goes with my t-shirt. And now that's all you're going to be able to think about. But I just noticed that this is a female mug and I so picked it up. Reply in the comment section about either the sermon or, or the mug. mug. Yeah, don't do that. Back on track. That was a good sermon, man, uh, with 
by all standards, a thorny thistle of a subject matter. So that was really, really cool. Mm. Now, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, what Maybe give me like two minutes of what you wish you could have contextualized, maybe for the growth groups. This is like broadening the lens of what we could talk about, oh, what we sure. could discuss. Because you got, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but we do vet and whittle these things down. Um, so the speaker obviously has more to say. So I, th- I thought it would be a cool thing to do that since you preached. Yeah, there's a lot left off on the cutting room floor it's I, maybe terry felt this the first two weeks but when you're when you have 30 minutes to preach on the topic of sin and that's your starting point it's like sin cover it yeah i'm like oh god yeah. okay um uh yeah disaster so there's like a million different ways this could have went and i decided to go the most crowd pleasing way which is to dig into some hebrew words um because that's what everyone's asking for that is um for packs the seats. Honestly, I, I felt good about really at the end of the day, we had to nail down all humans are sinful by nature. I mean, it was a very simple sermon. We are all baseline, like the default. If you dig down to the core right. of who we are, it's just like it's not goodness at that, you know, when you tear down to the bottom. I don't think that we don't believe. Which, right? by the way, just as a side note, is a philosophical, controversial statement for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it is. not in the grand scheme of like Orthodox Christianity. It's not controversial. It's the major. Yeah, th- it's it's by far the majority opinion. Yeah, I want to. I, I want to rephrase. You mean in like philosophy, larger large. lens? Yep. Oh, it's majorly, mm-hmm. oh, majorly, it's majorly, and that's important because we're making in secular society for yeah. sure, and that's why we talked about it. Um, well, and there's a lot of people in our church that probably disagreed going into this sermon, right. and maybe coming out of it, you still disagree. I did feel bad in the first service. I like rhetorically was like. Humans, you know, our default is good, right? And then there's like 20 people that were like, Yeah, right. I, I heard like, that. Oh, I felt really bad because I, I kind of just like, a lot of it might just be when the pastor says like, right, amen, like you're the Pavlov. And now they're just flapping in the in. breeze. They're just the kids with the dunce hat on in the but, corner. Yeah, I felt really bad for doing that. But the reality is like a lot of people are coming at that place of my my uh, my mic is sinful and just falling and falling. Um, are coming from that place of believe in kind of roughly that like humans seem oh yeah really good and the thing we haven't gotten into yet and i tease at the end of the sermon is uh you know at the very least christians have a different spirit in them and there and we do now have the capacity for right. like goodness right you know what i mean and we do have like the spirit of god living in us and and different traditions have believed that to some degree the spirit of god is in like the whole world like right the methodism kind of the pervenient grace thing that right you know, God is empowering goodness in some some ways throughout the world, but that the baseline theological conviction that um, we are just sinful um, is pretty, that's mainstream in Christianity at least, and sure. that's the majority opinion, yeah. but not elsewhere for sure. Some of the other stuff we talk about in the booklet, um, so we get into a little bit of that, like we get into the idea of, I think it's week one or day one, um, that you have it, you don't have it. No, no, um, good. That humans or Christians still struggle with sin. So Paul in Romans seven kind of says like, even with the spirit of God in me, I'm like, you know, right. trying to do the good and right. trying to follow God. And I still feel this pull in the other direction. Then we talk, I think a day two about that creation has fallen, right? So right. the idea of- And they're under our curse. Which right. I always thought was just fascinating subject matter to kick around conversation. Well, and it really like, it really uh, can reach contextualize, you know, was Hurricane Katrina- a judgment on America for, you know, whatever, <laughs> or is it just a, is you it just, just there. is it just a symptom of the, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, well, or is it, or is it like symptomatic of just the fact that we live in a fallen world to the point where it affects right the weather, you know? No, but it's a real, it's a, it's actually, it's and it, a real conversation that people are having in the sense that uh, I, I like this kind of thought, but that creation is aching under, under our curse and, and longing for that restoration, longing for our, longing to be restored. And I mean, there's all kinds of, there's, there's beautiful imagery in the Bible about that. And there's also beautiful imagery into the, the, the origin obedience of God's creation, longing, to, will, will be obedient to yeah. his glory and his praise regardless of our, yeah. there's just all this stuff there. Yeah. And that stuff's kind of cool, just as little uh, rabbit trails of conversation in the growth group. Um, I, I think that stuff... Uh, ignite some really, really cool stuff. The big thing we get into in the catalogs and in the um, or booklets and in the, hopefully in the growth group discussion that we didn't get into on Sunday because I didn't want to step on the toes of it, but 
is this idea that because of sin, um, not everything that happens in the world is like, because God wills it to be so, or that there's a lot of things that happen against God's will. Right. And that's where we get the idea that like Hurricane Katrina could be like God sending a hurricane, or it could be just symptomatic of, you know. Brokenness. Yeah. And and theologically, we would probably land on the side of saying God doesn't commit evil. So does God send, um, which that gets tricky, right? God is for God to judge. And there have been times in, in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament at least, where judgment comes in the form of sending or withholding, whether, et cetera. Yeah. So I guess we would land on the side of like, it's possible, but we don't know. Um, there's lots of stuff that happens that's not directly God's judgment on you, right? Like right. if um, if your son um, develops leukemia or whatever, you right. know what I mean? Like. Yeah, and this is very. You don't. Ass- you should not assume right. that like God has struck your son with. And leukemia. this is very culturally relevant, and it's very biblically relevant. I mean, if you go back and read Job, his friends are wondering exactly right, and and then jump ahead. Say you must have done something many wrong millennia because God would yeah, do this. Exactly. To you. That's yeah. still that that still isn't the tapestry of the way we think and talk. I mean, when I when I grew up, it would be very common for a Christian to maybe come up at a funeral, even in like a very and and, and say something. Like that, God has a plan. Just stuff, everything, platitudes. Everything happens for a reason, right? Which is a bigger discussion, but you know. But my everything point, happens for a reason is not necessarily a biblical idea. And to get back to your original point, th- this notion that God is is um, sort of throwing down circumstantial lightning bolts upon us. To some extent, I grew up in a time where that kind of thinking and that kind of lexicon and that kind of like you know, pushing those thoughts upon you, very, very common. I feel like, and push back on this, I feel like that's dissipated. Do you feel like that? I don't I don't get that Yeah, I much. think it's swung, and there's a worry that it swings the other way to where God's a deistic, like right. not at all involved, right? right? right. Either, either God's sending every tornado and every lightning bolt, or right. God's just uninvolved and uninterested, which is the other error, right. right? So we believe it's fully within God. We believe God does intervene. God has the potential to intervene in any given situation. I would say even even as, you know, humans have free will, that's a gift from God. And at any point, God could be like, done, right, flipping the switch. Right, like, right, we can't allow right. humans to continue to do what they're doing on earth. Um, so we want to find that middle ground. And, it, and, and that comes from believing first that there is a God um, who is in control, is ultimately sovereign, but he has allowed, permitted like certain levels of sin to be perpetrated in the created world for the time being. Right. right? Um, And part that seems to be hand in hand with like allowing humans to continue to exist. Right. Right. (laughs) It's like, if he's going to keep having a world with people in it for now, then God, apparently it's worth allowing sin to continue to drag the world down with them for the moment. You know, an interesting twist to this is something that my wife and I always talk about when we're discussing circumstances that we don't understand, is to flip the whole script around and say to yourself, but how much evil appears to be at bay? You know, you could flip that around and be like, how much does does right. the spirit of God or we how much... I don't know if like it, God might be... God, yeah, the spirit of God might be a dam right now holding right. back like an ocean So you evil. can look at it either side of the coin and I think that helps well around the conversation because... Because you could look at the world right now and say like, where you know, is God in any of this? Or you could look at it and be like, it's amazing that we're all wow. not like look at cannibals. This. We something. have like Seriously. homes and are protected and have children and all this prosperity and, and food and, you know, and granted that's not the case. So many places in the world... And I also think that I've been places, and this is just an anecdote, but I've been places, I've traveled a lot, and I've been places geographically where I felt, I've, I have felt tangibly like the Spirit of God was mm-hmm. not around as heavy. Wow. And, and in that, and that, and that, this is, I, I led this by saying, this isn't very important that you know this is anecdotal in my life, but I, I've, I've, I've often been th- I've thought about that. You know what I mean? Like, what is that doing in the very tangible here and now? And what is that doing to sin and the consequences of sin. It's a fascinating thought yeah. to spin off on. And, and just such a circumstance <laughs> as our growth groups to spin off on that. Yeah, it's a great conversation. At the end of the day, like we can speculate. We can we speculate. No yep. Trouble comes when we try and parse it out and say like, this is definitely 
this is definitely God. This is definitely yeah. human sin. There's definitely times where we can do that. I think God does not. I don't think God inflicts ch- innocent children with leukemia right. for no reason. I Nor just do don't. I. I think that is a, you know, God allows it, and we can definitely ask why. If God is preventing that X mm-hmm. amount of times, why was my kid not the time where He prevents it? Um, and that's a great question. And that's kind of Job's thing, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and God's answer is kind of like, I did not just, you know. This was there's the world doesn't work this way where it's all a math equation. Right. And like the things that happen to us are the 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 sum of the things we do. And, it just doesn't work that way. And That's if you want Job, a right? biblical yeah, if you want a biblical bl- blueprint for this, Job asks those questions. He's a, he asked those questions in torment, he asked those questions of circumstance. And I love personally, I love the latitude that God gives Job to experience the humanity of that, but I also love how he 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 does a little bit of where were <laughs> listen job where were you and I, I like i like the duality of that i think i think i think that lays over this topic too right cuz right. yeah yeah on one hand it's like the math's not that easy on the other hand it's like who are you, Joe? Who are you? I'm Any, s- like the fact that you have anything positive right. in your life that you can point which is to, it doesn't goes down is, like a, is a mercy pill. and a blessing right? right like you okay you're right in a way but also you're not owed anything right from God. Right. And, and an important theological place to start, I think. It's a really important place to start. Yeah. And it's really, it leads to some real beautiful stuff. It leads to gratitude. It oh, leads absolutely. to so many things that are Because wonderful. when we start from the point of like, you know, we're dead in our sins before God. We are at his mercy. He owes us nothing. And but then grace. like everything we experience and the fact then that the story doesn't end there and that God continues to pursue right. and continues to give us even tangible blessings in this life, or it, like all that's so far beyond what yeah, you know, I think it changes your perspective. As a, as a final note, I really I really do think that if you want to talk about like a very, very this seems like such a juggernaut of a topic. Here, you, little... you want to hit it? It's really good chai tea, by the way. But but like Mystic chai, Walmart. Mystic chai. Buy it. But but seriously, you know, for example, when I was in college, at the end of the day, most of the conversations that I would have with my fellow students about faith when I was mixing it up. I, they all sort of, this was the last train stop of the conversation is they were like, look, what about pain? And what are you going to, what are you going to offer me in the midst of this chaos that we're all dealing with? And, and, and this God that you're telling me is loving. And I mean, these are very practical things to wrap your mind around. And then to prepare, you know, we, we spoke of this right at the genesis of this thing. We said, we want to be able to have a, an answer. We, we want to be able to wrap our mind around our faith. Sin, I don't know if it gets any more relevant. I really don't. It's for all the reasons we've discussed, news headline after news headline, circumstantial in the micro life, all these things, for a Christian to be able to speak to that is very practical. And at the end of the day, might be exactly what's keeping somebody from really looking at the love of Jesus. It's just, I don't understand intellectually. It's this sin thing is just, it's just too much for me to, to accept. Mm-hmm. I think that's how practical it is. It has been like that for me. How many people are like this close to faith but they need to be able to conceptualize this and they need to be able to put this in a place in their mind. It's hugely important. Yeah, it yeah, is. It'll be, the, it'll be the key for a lot of mindsets in terms of unlocking and making sense of some things, yep. I think. Anyway, buddy, well done. That's what we have for you this week. Uh, Ryan's going to close this off. You didn't know Ryan had this kind of talent. This podcast's been fun, but it's over now. Everybody. It must have been love. <laughs> See, the thing, the thing that podcasting is to keep a very firm grip on your legacy. So Ryan just did that, but I didn't. Take it easy. All right. That was good. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not afraid. Listen, I'm not afraid to tarnish my legacy, but be afraid. <laughs>